We have reached the pinnacle of the season, Bears fans. Welcome into We Are Regal Radio's three and out series where we give you three takeaways from every single Bears game, do a little post-mortem and, you know, kind of unbelievably and believably, if you will, we are at basically season's end. One more week left to go in the regular season and believe it or not, the Bears have plenty to play for this week and uh it's probably going to be about one of the most exciting weeks of the entire bear season uh given how up and down this year has been and how many inconsistencies this team has gone through but overall if they get a win against green bay or a cardinals loss to the rams and that'll get the job done as well for the bears so let's get started right away with our first takeaway and we're going to talk plenty of playoff stuff and things of that nature. But where I would like to first get started is just kind of how the overall uh, game was played out by the Bears. And, you know, still another really positive day for the offense, uh, moving the football, getting points, scoring a lot of points. The Bears end up winning this game 41-17. to it was uh, a very slow first half where they found themselves only up a total of three points, 13 to 10. And then the Bears exploded in the third quarter, which has been extremely rare this season, with a tune of 21 unanswered points. The defense did its job in the second half, uh, nailing down the Jags, only giving up seven overall points. So it was a good day for the Chicago Bears overall. And... You know, really, it's been a good month for them because they've been taking advantage of a lot of weaker opponents. And they even got the extra little Christmas gift, if you will, where the Cardinals lost to the 49ers, which, of course, paved the way for the Bears to be the seventh seed. And now for them to get in, as I pointed out before, they need a win against Green Bay or an Arizona Cardinals loss this Sunday against the Rams. The game uh, has been really what we've seen out of the Bears pretty much all year long and not as consistently. We know the offense has struggled really until about the last month of the year, but it's been beating up on really bad teams. That's been their formula and they've struggled against the solid to really good teams and there's no way around it really unless the Cardinals lose. They're going to have to beat a good team in the Green Bay Packers and the playoff team if they're going to find a way to get into the postseason as the number seven seed. Everything's got to be better, though, when you look at how this game was played against the Jags. The defense still hasn't looked quite elite like it did earlier in the year. I mean, they have looked very gettable, and against a high-powered Green Bay offense, they're going to have to be part of the huge difference maker of getting a Bears victory. So they've got to definitely shore up some things and figure out why the heck uh, some of these problems have been happening on the defensive side of the football. As for the offense, you know, things have looked much better with Mitch Trubisky under center, and he's definitely helped this new makeshift offensive line. There's been more of a commitment to running the football. All of these things are very positive, but you still got that one interception from Mitch that was just beyond terrible. You can't make mistakes like that, especially going up against Green Bay. And to be fair, he should have given up even more uh, turnovers. He had another interception in the second half that was just completely dropped by uh, a Jacksonville Jaguar. So, you know, great stuff from Mitch overall these last uh, four games or so, but he's still got to play better, and we got to see it against good competition. He's been able to bum slay for sure. It, we just haven't seen a lot of him beating those really good teams and, of course, those playoff teams and the type of games that the Bears need to win in order to be contenders and playoff teams rather than just being on the outside looking in and kind of being a mediocre squad like they are. So we're going to move along to our second point, and really this is kind of combined with our third takeaway, and it's just all about looking ahead to this final uh, season matchup against the Bears and Packers to wrap up the regular season. The game has already been flexed to 325 to get a larger viewing audience, and we're going to find out a lot about this Bears team. We're going to find out a lot about the character of this locker room. We're going to find out how hard they compete against really good teams, 
because last night uh, the Tennessee Titans they got a, a very rude uh, awakening from Green Bay, if you will. I mean, they just absolutely planted them in the ground. Forty to fourteen was the advantage of the Packers over the Titans in that matchup. So not only has this Packers defense been doing it. But they've also been scoring like crazy, and you'd expect that with Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Jones. It's been a great year for Green Bay, and it's gonna. This game is gonna be so so tough for the Bears if they don't handle a lot of the little things, and then they got to make some plays. So this is where it gets really interesting because against teams like the Jaguars, the Texans, the Vikings, even. You know, really gettable teams, teams with major weaknesses that they can't just mask up. Uh, you know, you can do some things like if you're the Vikings with a bad defense. Well, we got to run the ball, we got to convert on third downs, blah blah blah. If you don't handle those type of, uh, if you don't handle your business in that type of manner, I should say, then you're exposing yourself to your weaknesses, which of course was that defense. So Green Bay is going to come in with very few weaknesses whatsoever. The Bears have plenty of areas of concern, like their run defense, what they do offensively against a good defense. The only way the Bears are really going to be able to win this game is if they get some big-time plays out of their defense, probably need a play or two from your special teams, and you got to do enough offensively. It's going to be a challenge, without a doubt, for the Bears to win this game. And if they go ahead and win this game, you know, maybe it gives you a little bit of hope looking forward that they're not going to just get run over in that first round of the playoffs. Of course, you look at it the other way. If this is similar to what it's been like against the Packers for the Bears, where they've been basically blown out routinely or at least routinely losing, and you only back your way into the playoffs because of a Cardinals loss and you don't look so good against the Packers, you know, I guess you take that as a fan. It makes that first bit of January a little bit more exciting since you have a playoff team. But, boy, that's just such a letdown. And when you give in a 5-1 and one start, how much uh, aspirations of grandiose ideas of contending coming into this season, all that stuff, and you just kind of limp your way into the playoffs with an 8-8 eight eight record and don't improve from a year before – that's going to be very disconcerting overall for Bears fans in this franchise. So definitely something to kind of keep in mind as you watch this game. So to kind of wrap up this takeaway, we're going to look at the other side because, you know, the Bears, they're in a very interesting position when you look at the future of this football team. Right now, at best, they're going to be 9-7 and seven or they'll be 8-8. Eight and eight. It, Maybe a tie happens. They'd be somewhere in the middle with 8-7-1, and one, but essentially you're either going to be one game better than you were a year ago or you're going to be the exact same. And there's a lot of confusion about the future of this team. You don't know who the quarterback is moving forward. You know you got to make some new investments on the offensive line. Some big money contracts like Allen Robinson, and maybe not huge money, but some of the guys that are on the higher side of getting paid in the salary cap on the Bears' current roster, some of these guys might be casualties so that the team can have more money to rebuild other areas of weakness. Or if, let's say, they do decide to maybe sign a quarterback, quarterbacks are extremely expensive. Maybe they even want to try to do a trade for a quarterback. And to give an example... Let's say the Bears love Carson Wentz, and Carson Wentz is available for trade. He's got a mega contract. I don't know if that would work with the salary cap, but if let's say the Bears really believed in him and you knew you could cut Allen Robinson and get that done, maybe you do that. But you throw a little bit of a caveat or pull away from what I just said and kind of look more macro, who is making that decision? Is this still going to be Ryan Pace's football team after this year if there isn't much improvement? And what is improvement? Is it just simply getting to the playoffs at 9-7 and seven or 8-8 eight and eight and then getting beaten in the first round? Because the Bears haven't won a playoff game since 2010, I believe, when they beat the, the Seattle Seahawks in a route to losing to Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, which was the infamous Jay Cutler injured knee game. That's where I think the real curiosity is right now with the Bears, is what is ownership really looking at with this team? Is it 
good enough for everybody to come on back if this team just makes the playoffs and loses, even if their record is the exact same as a season ago. I think it's reasonable to expect that if you're a Bears fan, and, and I'm sure a lot of Bears fans are hoping that isn't the case. And then you look at if that isn't good enough, that standard that is set where you are in the playoffs, you lose in the first round, but you still have the same record. Does a head roll, does somebody get fired from a prominent spot? Because remember, at the end of 2019, a bunch of offensive coaches were let go for an 8-8 eight and eight final uh, record on the season, and the offense was the huge problem. This year, offense has been a huge problem again. It hasn't been over the last month, but look at who you're playing. That's the other thing. You can't just say, oh, man, we're scoring 30 or 40 points a game now. Who are you playing? Because there's reasons why the Bears are scoring, and maybe we see the reason why the Bears can't score this week against Green Bay is because, hey, they're a good football team. And when the Bears go up against a good football team, they're not going to be as good. What does that tell you about your overall process? You know, you're going to have a late first-round draft pick more than likely. Uh, probably best-case scenario for the Bears is around 16 if you're talking about getting high up in the draft. Otherwise, they're going to be probably right around 20, low 20s, depending on the them getting into the playoffs and what the results are of their initial playoff run. You know, with so many holes and you need – the right person drafting in that first round, do you give all the trust still to Ryan Pace that, hey, two seasons in a row, you know, especially if he doesn't get to 9-7, he has only had one winning season in six years. I mean, there eventually hits a point where you say, I don't think we can trust this guy anymore. Does ownership ever get to that spot this year? Because now with this, you know, winning streak or winning revival, if you will, since the Texans, Vikings, and Jags, is ownership now saying, okay, if we make the playoffs, everybody's safe. And is that a good thing for the Bears? A lot of these questions are very difficult to answer, but I think majority of fans would lean towards it is not right for everybody to keep their jobs and everything to stay the same just because this team happened to get in as the seventh seed and maybe a one-game improvement over a season ago that was extremely disappointing. And this one, even with a playoff uh, berth, you know, I think the Bears would have to win a couple playoff games for this year to really be successful. If you get a playoff berth and you just lose first round like it was in 2018, Again, you're just not seeing progress from your team that you've been rebuilding ever since Phil Emery and Mark Trestman were let go. And Ryan Pace has been in charge of that rebuild one winning season in six years so far. And at best, it's going to be two and six, which isn't great in itself. So that's why this game against the Packers coming up is just going to be so interesting and critical because if the Bears do put together a terrific football game, Mitch Trubisky looks really good, scores 30 points, the defense does its job, and let's say the Bears just lose, but they look you know, as good as we've seen them look all year long. They just come up a little bit short. Maybe you can start buying into some of this progress. Maybe you can start looking at some of this progress as a positive, especially if even if they lost to Green Bay, but it was a, a great effort and they just came up short, and then they get into the postseason and they actually knock somebody out. You feel a lot better about the Bears' direction. So really, their season almost teeters on this matchup with Green Bay, and it's almost just perfectly a metaphor of every single year where it seems like the Bears are always looking at Green Bay at the top of the division saying, do we have enough of the right stuff to take them off the NFC North crown? So this, in a way, is a statement game for the Bears. This current roster of players, the current coaches, everybody in the front office. I mean, this is your chance to show ownership that you're moving in the right direction, as well as the fan base. And ultimately, Bears fans, this game against Green Bay matters a lot because we know ownership hates losing to Green Bay. And if everybody kind of remembers that Chris Conti with Mark Trestman when Aaron Rodgers hits that fourth and goal, Chris Conti blows the coverage, the Bears lose that final game of the year, the Packers overtake them and get into the, uh, the playoffs. 
everybody kind of remembers how heartbreaking that was. And that was a, that's a big barometer for ownership. What are we doing against the crown jewel of the NFC North right now, which has been Green Bay over the last 20 years, if not longer? So everything's right now on the line. This is as interesting and as dramatic of a game, I think, that you are going to see right now in the Bears season besides a playoff berth. So I guess if you can, Bears fans, enjoy it. But uh, keep your head on a swivel if you want an NFL term. Keep your head on a swivel about this Bears team and don't get too high or too low. Just kind of understand where they're at. Appreciate any type of run that they make, but hold ownership accountable if this team just does what most likely they will do, which is either just fall short of the playoffs or get into the playoffs and lose. So we'll see where this Bears team shows up or not shows up in terms of that statement.